Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and in this video I'm going to help you reach the top 5% hopefully and this is looking at game week 20. We'll look back at game week 19 then what we're going to do for game week 20. It's Tuesday today and I realise game week 20 doesn't start until Friday but I've got chess tomorrow, I'm going to a friend on Thursday and then on Friday itself I'm at some work event. So this is my only chance to get this video out. I'll be showing you some transfers you may need to make but if you can hold off until Friday, but before the deadline, that might be useful because if there's an injury before Friday, you don't want to be bringing them in. But if you want to do it before Friday, that's okay because they probably won't get injured. Okay, I think that was <laughs> unclear enough. <laughs> right, let's have a look at how game 19 would have gone and then what we're going to plan for game week 20. As always, we start with the bankers. You all have these players. We have Ward, Bueno, Andreas and Haaland. Ward and Bueno started on the bench. Andreas has got one point so far, but there's still another game to play. So there are some scores coming in for Fulham and Chelsea on Thursday, but I have to record this now. So throughout this video, there's a few pluses to say the score may go up. Haaland got a very disappointing two, but nearly everyone has Haaland and about 80% of people are so captained Haaland. So that doesn't matter. We captained Haaland, so the two becomes a four. So the bank has got five plus points because for some of you, this will probably go up yet. Goalkeeper, you'd have each have had one of these. Edison, Pope, Ramsdale, or Kepa. They've scored eight, ten, six. Kepa's got two, but he's got another game yet. So hopefully that'll go up a little bit yet. So on average, we're saying we got six and a half plus because the average would probably go higher than that. You'll each have one of these defenders, Cancelo, Trent and Robertson. They scored 1-5-1. One, one. So these are the three most expensive defenders in the game and they've been very disappointing. Liverpool have now lost Van Dijk, so the chance of them getting clean sheets has reduced further. I think they're about the fourth worst for clean sheets at the moment in the Premiership. And Cancelo's not being picked, or he's not being picked for 90 minutes by Pep. So these three we're going to be moving on. You'll each have one of these. We're going to lose them. It's a bit annoying because Cancelo does have a double game week and he could get a massive score this week. But looking at the pattern from the last few weeks, he's not been doing it. Trent and Robertson are brilliant from the attacking point of view, but defending they're a problem. So in the games they don't get an attacking return, they're going to get one point generally. And for less money, we can get someone who's likely to get as many points so that's why we're moving them on uh, so they got an average of 2.3 you'll each have three of these defenders Trippier, James, Akanji, Gabriel, Shaw, Luca Dean, Dallo, White, Castagne they scored eight didn't play one six fifteen two one seven one so an average of 15.4 given that you've got three of these one midfielder, you'd have had one of Salah, De Bruyne, Son, Fernandez, Sterling. And they scored 2, 3, 8, 6, 1. So since the restart, when we re-picked our team, so it's like a wild card, it's only De Bruyne now that hasn't had a return. But he's got a double game week this coming game week. Maybe this will be the week where he's going to get a good score. So whichever one of these five you chose, you did all right. And the choice was okay, basically, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, so an average of four this week for whichever one of those midfielders you had. You would have had one of Foden, Saka, Mount, Trossard. They scored one, three. Mount didn't play his first double game week game, but he's got another game and he appears to be fit, so he will get something. Trossard didn't play, so somebody would have come off the bench for you. So the average was only two, could be a bit higher than that for this particular midfielder, so that was obviously very poor. You would have had one of these midfielders, Barnes, Martinelli, Rashford, Odegaard, Almiron. 2-3, Rashford got 8, Odegaard and Almiron got 2. Now Newcastle and Arsenal played each other, so there was always the chance it was going to be a nil-nil, that is what the score was. But these are still very good players. Players tend not to get scores week after week, that is returns plus good scores. But over a period of time, these players tend to be good. 
So an average of 3.4 for that position. You'd have had one of these forwards, Kane, Darwin, Tony. Scored 16-1, Tony's out. Now we don't have news on whether or not Tony's going to get a ban. So I would suggest you keep hold of Tony. If after you've done the other transfers, you particularly want to move Tony on to Darwin or Kane, you can. If I was in your position, unless there's any news you get before Friday, I think it's worth keeping Tony. But he might be injured. So it's it's kind of up in the air a little bit. Um, so I'd say do what you want on that. But I will keep Tony in here because I'll assume until we know he's out, uh, people are still going to have him. That was a bit unclear, wasn't it? Sorry about that. An average of eight and, a, eight and a half points for these. Now, Darwin's getting a lot of big chances. He's just not putting them away. And I tend to agree with what people are saying online, which is at some point he is going to start getting lots of goals. So if I had Darwin, I'd be keeping him. Kane's got a double game week, but he's got four yellow cards. If he gets a booking in his first game, he's going to miss the second game. It's possible he's going to blank in both of those, even if he doesn't get a yellow card. So I don't think it's worth taking a four-point hit to move Tony to Kane. I wouldn't be doing it. I definitely wouldn't be moving Darwin to Kane, at least not this week. That's what I'd be doing. Uh, you'll have one of these forwards, Mitrovic, Martial, Solanke. They scored 5-2-2. Two, and two. Martial's got a double game week coming up, so he could be doing quite well. They got an average of three. So the global average so far is 43 points, but of course there's still one game left. If you followed this system, the worst I reckon you could have got was 18 points. That could go up. The average was 50.1. Of course, that could go up. And the maximum was 90, which again could go up depending on the results later in the week. When we did this video for game week 18, I said if you're doing this system and you don't mind me knowing about it, please leave your team name or your ID in the comments and I have a look at your team. And some people did that and I had a look. So I thought this week I'd go through all of those ones that I can see are copying me just to see how they did this week. So we've got one here, uh, Sarah Jane celebrating victory. Celebrating victory, clever name. <laughs> they scored 43, which is just the global average. This is their team. This is her team. Uh, they still have Andreas to play, so that would push them slightly above the global average, unless he gets a minus score, I guess, or a zero. Uh, and Trossard, obviously, somebody come off the bench for a point for that one. And they're from Scotland. And game week 16, they were on 633. They've been following the system all season. They're currently down to 850,000. But we're not worried about that. We gradually peg it back. We're going for the top 5%. They're currently inside just inside the top eight percent by the looks of it texas t-rexes for another one from scotland uh, they've got 43 points this is their team they've got two still to play so they should comfortably get above the global average but i know they only started following the system from game week 17 so game week 16 they were just outside the three million now they're well on 2.7 million but they're gradually moving up so that's nice plenty of time to try and get this team also in the top 5%. But of course, we're starting from a much lower base. Anyone who joined this in game week 17, if you're a long way back, of course, it's going to be harder to get the 5%. But we can still try and get you up the charts and see how it goes. Dip to Das, I hope I've got that right. Bangladesh, at least the flag is. Samurai Buffaloes, 51 points. Uh, still with two people to play, Kepa and Andreas. And I think when I looked at them, they weren't following the system in game week 16, certainly. So I think they've been doing it just from game week 17. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, that's fine. So they gradually moved up. They've gone up to 800,000-ish, nearly. Yeah, 800,000 they've moved up so far since they've been following this. So that's nice. Let's see if we can get the 5% with this one. Hukumatata, Zach, hopefully England. That's our first English one. Look at that. Game week point 59. And they've still got two Chelsea boys to play. So they're comfortably above the global average. So that's good. And they're up to uh, 669,000 now in game week 19. So that's that's jolly good, I think. If that was my team, I'd be happy with that. This channel's got 433 subscribers now. Thank you very much for everyone who's subscribing. If you like this stuff, please do subscribe. Likes are nice as well, if you don't mind. And comments are always good. Right, transfers. There's two potential transfers this week. If it costs you a hit, take the hit. It's worth it. 
So we're going to get rid of your expensive defender, which is either Trent, Cancelo or Robertson. It does hurt to do this. They could do really well, but we've potentially got a string of double game weeks coming up and we really want to get players that we think are going to be playing the full 90 minutes and have a chance of getting good scores. We may want to get some Liverpool players back in in a couple of weeks' time and it's possible I'll be bringing in Trent or Robertson then, but probably not. We'll probably go for outfield players. If you don't yet have Trippier, buy Trippier. If you do have Trippier, then choose one of Stones from Man City, Shaw or Gabriel. So Trippier is going to become a banker from next week because everyone will have him. And it's worth knowing that Cancelo's got a double game week and we're selling him, which is very unfortunate. But we just don't know he's going to be playing 90 minutes. Man City could keep two clean sheets and he gets two points. Um, whereas it looks like Stones is getting um, played a lot at the moment. So he seems a safer bet. Stones and Shaw both have double game weeks. So if you already have Trippier, if I was in your position, I'd be inclined to go for Stones or Shaw. If you've got Edison in goal, I'd go for Shaw. If you don't have Edison in goal, either one's okay. This coming game week, Stones will probably do better, but they're both very good picks. Shaw, I don't want to say which way to go, but Gabriel is also a perfectly good pick. If you want to go for Gabriel, so there we go. If you've not got Trippier, get him. Otherwise, one of those three. The second transfer... Sterling may be out for a while, but I think we should move him on anyway and try and attack the double game week. So if you've got Sterling, sell him. If you can afford De Bruyne and you've got enough Man City spaces, I think he's worth getting. Otherwise, any of these three are fine. De Bruyne has a double game week this game week, as does Son, as does Fernandez. So if this was me, and I do have Sterling in my team... I'm going to be swapping him for De Bruyne. But Son and Fernandes are both OK. But De Bruyne is probably the safer bet, even though he's not done anything for two or three weeks. If you don't have Sterling, don't move any of these about. Just stay with who you've got. Each week, all we need to do is get the bench right and the other players sort themselves out. So your goalkeeper, you want to put Ward on your bench. And for your positions, one, two, three, I'm going to show you five players. You should each have three of these. The first one you see goes in position three on the bench. The second one you see that you've got goes in two and the last one position one. So if you have Billing, put him on the last place on your bench. The next one on your bench is going to be Andreas, Somerville, Bueno and Bailey. Bailey was very unfortunate at the end of the last game. Ended in tears because he missed, a, well they're saying it was a sitter of a shot. I mean I obviously wouldn't have got it. I'd have, I'd have missed it by even more. So I think Bailey is going to have some good weeks. And I look to see can we fit him into our team but I decided it's going to be a bit complex, basically. I try to keep this nice and simple. So that's all the benches. Captain for game week 20, of course, we're going to say Haaland. Now, Haaland's got a double game week. He could get a massive score. Of course, he might end up with four or five points. He could get 25, 30 points. You've got a triple captain chip, or you should have a triple captain chip left. There's going to be maybe three weeks, three or four weeks in the season where it makes sense to play it, but you can only play it once. If you want to play it this game week, that's absolutely fine. It's absolutely legitimate. There's Man City who have another game week. At least they've got another one in a couple of weeks' time. There'll be another one for them, maybe two later in the season. So this isn't the only chance to do it. And Haaland does have two difficult games with Man United and Tottenham, but difficult-ish. Derby games, doesn't matter who the teams are, can go crazy one way or the other and Spurs are quite poor at defending at the moment so it's quite possible he's going to get a very good score of course it's possible he get injured in the first few minutes we just don't know so I've not decided for myself I probably won't play the triple captain this week but it's not impossible so I'm throwing it out there if you want to play it that's fine if you don't that's absolutely fine as well right vice captain what I say every week or tend to say when I remember is you don't want the vice captain and the captain to be playing in the same game just in case the game gets called off. However, with a double game week, that goes out the window because it's extremely unlikely that both games would get called off. Possible, but very unlikely. Therefore, if you have De Bruyne, make De Bruyne your vice captain. 
If you don't have De Bruyne, but you have Kane, make him your vice captain. If you have neither of those, but you have Son, he's your vice. None of those, but you have Rashford, go for him. None of those, but you have Fernandez, make him your vice captain. If you have none of those, but you have Martial, make him your vice captain. If you have none of those, but you can see any other double game week player, so you might have Stones, you might have Foden, you might have Shaw, Edison perhaps, just make them the vice captain. The chances are Haaland is going to play, so we won't even get to the vice captain. And after all that, if you have none of those combinations, which is theoretically possible, then make Trippier your vice captain. Hopefully that made enough sense and it's easy enough for you to follow. There's a real chance that we can get some good scores this week. So let's hope we do all right. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Bye.